For a long time it was held that the Neanderthals were stupid, primitive subhumans, shambling, lacking symbolism. Turns out that that's not true at all. Certain populations in the world today still have three to five percent of Neanderthal uh, DNA. Tucked away in the rugged terrains of the Altai Mountains, where the borders of Russia, China, Mongolia and Kazakhstan meet, lies a fascinating piece of history that has captured the imaginations of archaeologists and historians alike. The Denisova Cave. This is uh, a, a, an issue that I go into in, in America before. And what first drew me into it was uh, Denisova Cave mm -hmm. uh, in Siberia. This isn't just any cave, it's a treasure trove of human evolution nestled in an area known for its breathtaking biodiversity and complex geological history. The mountains themselves are alive with a rich variety of plants and animals, setting the perfect backdrop for a story that's as much about the natural world as it is about our ancient ancestors. I think everybody's heard of the Neanderthals, and these days I think everybody's heard of the Denisovans as well. The story of Denisova Cave began to unfold in the 1970s when Soviet scientists first explored its depths. At that time, their eyes were set on unraveling the geological and paleontological mysteries of the region, largely overlooking the cave's potential to unlock secrets of our past. It's named after Denis, an 18th century hermit who once called the cave home, adding a touch of human history to its ancient walls. With its intricate network of chambers and galleries, the cave hinted at stories of long-term habitation by early humans, waiting just beneath the surface to be discovered. But it wasn't until 2008 that the cave truly stepped into the spotlight, thanks to the discovery of a small finger bone. In Russia, in Denisova Cave, they find a single pinky bone from a little finger. And what they discover is, this isn't a Neanderthal, this isn't an anatomically modern human being, this is another human species. This wasn't just any bone, it belonged to the Denisovans, an ancient group of hominins previously unknown to science. Suddenly the world was paying attention, eager to learn more about these mysterious inhabitants. The cave, with its rich layers of history buried within, revealed that it had been a bustling crossroads for different groups over tens of thousands of years. What's particularly intriguing about the Denisova cave is not just its archaeological wealth, but also its location. Nestled in a remote part of the Altai Mountains, reaching it is no small feat. The harsh climatic conditions add an extra layer of challenge for those daring enough to explore its secrets. Yet it's precisely these obstacles that make the cave so alluring to researchers from across the globe. Every expedition brings us closer to understanding not just the Denisovans, but the broader narrative of human history. Imagine stumbling upon a piece of the puzzle that is human history, hidden away in the depths of Siberia's Denisova cave. The Denisovans are a bit of a mystery, genetically distinct from both modern humans and Neanderthals. Their DNA tells us they branched off from Neanderthals around 400,000 years ago, enriching the narrative of the Pleistocene era's human saga. But when it comes to what they looked like, we're mostly in the dark. Our clues? Just a finger bone, a few teeth, and a piece of skull. Though these fragments are robust, they hint at Denisovans being well equipped for surviving the tough Pleistocene Asia. Now here's where it gets really interesting. The Denisovans didn't just keep to themselves, they left a mark on us, modern humans. Certain groups today, especially in Asia and Oceania, carry Denisovan DNA. For instance, the indigenous people of Melanesia, including Papua New Guineans, have about 5% of their DNA from Denisovans. This reveals a history of ancient interbreeding that is more complex and common than we ever imagined. Anatomically modern humans interbred with Neanderthals. You can't interbreed with another species. They, they clearly were uh, hum human beings. Denisovans mixed not just with modern humans, but also Neanderthals and possibly another yet unidentified ancient human group. But what about their way of life? The Denisova cave has given us a glimpse yielding sophisticated tools, a bone needle, and even jewellery. These finds suggest a culture and level of sophistication that challenges our understanding of archaic humans. Their discovery of the Denisovans has been a game-changer in evolutionary biology, painting a picture of our past that's far more intricate than previously thought. 
It's not just about who we are, but who we're connected to, revealing a web of interactions among ancient human species across Eurasia. Yet for all we've learned, the Denisovans remain shrouded in mystery. With each fossil fragment and DNA sequence, scientists are slowly piecing together the jigsaw of our ancient past. The Denisovan genome in particular continues to be a treasure trove of information, promising to unlock even more secrets as research progresses. This story is far from over. It's an ongoing journey of discovery into who we are and where we come from. Siberia's Yakutia region, known for its jaw-dropping temperature extremes, is home to a place as intriguing as its ominous name suggests, the Valley of Death. Tucked away in the northeastern part of Siberia, in the Saka Republic, this valley is not just a testament to nature's extremes but also a canvas for mysteries that boggle the mind. What sets this valley apart are the curious metallic structures scattered across its landscape. Picture this, dome-like formations and metal objects, some peeking out of the earth as if partially buried treasures all wrapped in a mystery. Are they ancient artifacts, remnants of meteorite impacts, or something else? The truth is, we're still scratching our heads trying to figure it out. Getting to the Valley of Death is an adventure in itself, it's remote, wildly inhospitable, and the weather swings from scorching summers to winters that would give even the hardiest explorer pause. This makes studying those mysterious structures all the more challenging. Local folklore adds layers of intrigue to the valley. The Yakut people have tales that could make your hair stand on end associating the valley and its metallic mysteries with danger and otherworldly energies. According to legend, these structures could wield unknown powers causing illness or worse to those who dare too close. While these stories add to the valley's mystique, they remain unverified whispers of the past. Scientists, on their part, have theories that could explain the existence of these structures. Some suggest they might be the aftermath of meteorite impacts, pointing to Siberia's history with celestial events like the famous Tunguska explosion. Others speculate they could be the work of ancient humans or a civilization lost to time, leaving behind these puzzling artifacts. But here's the rub. Actually exploring this area is incredibly tough. The extreme climate, the area's seclusion and the sheer lack of infrastructure make sustained research difficult. This scarcity of empirical data means much about the Valley of Death remains a tantalizing mystery. This shroud of mystery isn't just a magnet for scientists. Historians, paranormal enthusiasts and even adventurous tourists are drawn to its secrets. The allure of uncovering more about Siberia's ancient past and its uncharted territories is irresistible. As technology and exploration methods improve, who knows what secrets will unearth from the Valley of Death until then, it remains one of Siberia's most captivating enigmas a place where history, legend, and science converge in the most mysterious of dances. Let's dive into one of Siberia's most mind-boggling mysteries that the Tunguska event of 1908. Imagine a blast so powerful it flattens 80 million trees over an area of 2,150 square kilometers. That's exactly what happened near the Podkamenaya Tunguska River in central Siberia on June 30th, 1908. This wasn't just any old explosion, it was roughly 1,000 times mightier than the Hiroshima atomic bomb. The shock waves from this colossal blast were felt up to 2,000 kilometers away. People at the time reported seeing a bright blue light, almost like a second sun, followed by a series of booms that were strong enough to knock folks off their feet and shatter windows hundreds of kilometers away. Fast forward to 1927, and enter Leonid Kulik, a Russian mineralogist who was the first to scientifically investigate the site. Kulik was expecting to find a meteorite crater, but was met instead with a sea of flattened trees, splayed out from a central point like the spokes of a wheel with not a crater in sight. The most accepted theory, a small asteroid or comet fragment burst through the atmosphere, exploding 5 to 10 kilometers above ground with the force of 10-15 megatons of TNT. But as with all good mysteries, there are other angles, everything from a natural gas explosion from the Earth's belly to wilder notions like antimatter or even a mini black hole having a run-in with our planet. 
The aftermath of this explosion wasn't just a big patch of knocked down trees, it had a significant environmental punch, boosting tree growth in the area and reportedly causing genetic mutations in plants and animals, likely thanks to the extreme heat and shockwave it even had a hand in global atmospheric changes, like the creation of night shining clouds and a dip in atmospheric transparency across Europe and Asia. But here's where it gets even juicier. The Tunguska event has been a hotbed for conspiracy theories and wild speculation. From alien spacecraft crashes to top-secret weapon tests, the event's mysterious nature has sparked imaginations worldwide. Despite decades of research and countless theories, the Tunguska event remains one of the 20th century's most tantalizing unsolved mysteries. It's a real-life sci-fi story, set in the remote Siberian wilderness, that continues to intrigue and puzzle us to this day.